This isn't the video that I had planned on making this week, but I see this come up once in a while on the forums and the Discord and whatnot, and I decided that it might be finally worth making a video on to explain what's going on. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and have you ever had your 3D scene in Game Maker being rendered inside out? Like this. It is seriously brain breaking if you look at it for too long, so we're going to not do that. Uh, this is something that, I don't know if I could say everyone has had happen to them at least once, but it's definitely something that uh, happens on occasion to people. There's a few main reasons that this can happen. There's a few different things that can cause this. We're going to talk about the most common three and a half-ish today. So put on your seatbelts. Let's close out of there because I am definitely getting a bit of a headache from looking at that. And let's dive right in. So by far the most common reason that this happens to people is simply because you are forgetting to set or alternatively you're accidentally disabling the GPU set Z test enable and GPU set Z write enable function somewhere. These are the two functions which will cause GameMaker to make use of depth information when it renders your scene. If you are not making use of depth information when you render your scene, then triangles are just going to be layered in the order that they're drawn. Things that are far away from the camera will not be occluded by things that are near to the camera if they are drawn after the things that are drawn near to the camera. So you forget to set these functions, all hell breaks loose. Uh, generally, you're going to want to GPU set Z write enable and GPU set Z test enable either at the beginning of your draw event before any actual like stuff is rendered in 3D space. Or I usually do it in like the pre-draw event or the draw begin or something like that. It's not super important where it happens as long as it happens before your 3D scene is rendered in each, um, in each frame. Uh, generally, you will want to turn this off again once you are finished drawing because when um, when you're done with the 3D scene, it doesn't it's not really relevant anymore for like UI stuff and what have you. Anyway, if I run this now with GPU set Z write enable and GPU set Z test enable turned on, uh, everything is back to normal and we have depth behaving as it's as it's supposed to. So we've got the mountains being drawn behind the trees. We've got the trees that are in front being drawn in front of the trees that are in back. All right. So related to this, another thing that can happen, another thing that can cause this is, and uh, how easy can I, um, how easy can I induce this here? Uh, if you are drawing to a surface, and if you have anywhere called surface depth disable, and set that to true, you call this function, and any surface created afterwards will not have a depth buffer to go with it. So any depth and stencil functions you try to use on it will just not work. Uh, right now, I am cur currently drawing to the application surface, so if I were to create a new surface with surface create, um, and if I were to draw onto that in 3D, or if I were to resize the application surface uh, with, this with this disabled, so if I were to say set this to like... set that to half the window width and height, and if I were to go render my 3D scene onto it, even if I am calling the Z test and Z write functions as I'm supposed to, and then if I were to just later go and draw the application surface into the frame buffer, um, if I were to do this, uh, we once again have our world being drawn inside out and also at half resolution because I set the surface to half resolution. Uh, that's, a, that's a little secondary here. Trees are being drawn inside and on top of other trees. That's not really how things are supposed to work. Uh, this is admittedly, in some cases, actually kind of my fault when this happens to people because, uh, as as it transpired, um, a lot of people mainly know this function because I made a video on it a couple of years ago, and like it's it's totally fine to turn this off if you're making a 2D game and you're not ever engaging the depth buffer, right? But Sometimes people do that and then they decide that they do need to render in 3D for something and they forget to turn it back on. Or sometimes people turn on surface depth disable for when they're creating a surface, but they don't realize that it still applies when you resize a surface. When you resize a surface, it will basically be destroyed and recreated. And um, if depth is disabled, then it won't have the depth buffer to go with it when it's recreated. Obviously, it's still a good idea to use this function if you can get away with it. So if you're just making a normal 2D game as long as you remember to turn it back on when you actually need it. The third reason that this can happen, and this is a, this is a little bit different to simply enabling or disabling depth, but when you call matrix build projection perspective FOV, which is the longest function name in GameMaker, uh, just a fun fact about this function, and uh, again, to be fair to people to whom this happens to, a lot of the resources on the internet about setting up a projective perspective, proje pro a projection matrix, uh, including I think some of my older videos, don't really 
go into much detail about the near and far clipping planes. They'll just tell you to like make the near clipping plane one and the far clipping plane like either a thousand or uh, like ten thousand or in my cases I had it here sixteen thousand or something like that. And they won't really go into detail about what happens if you put funny values in here. Um, I did talk about this briefly when I made a video a little while ago on uh, Z fighting. But some people think that, well, I want stuff to be drawn infinitely close to my camera, so I'm just going to set the near clipping plane to zero instead of one, and then that'll be great because I'll be able to draw stuff that's infinite, infinitely close to my camera. But that doesn't really work, and I'm not going to step through every line of code here that happens when you multiply a matrix by another matrix, but uh, in OpenGL, this is what a projection matrix is composed of, a, pr a pr perspective projection matrix. And you'll want to pay attention to these particular... Uh, indices in the matrix here. Uh, these indices pertain to the near clipping plane, and you'll think about what happens if you set the near clipping plane to zero. Uh, these values will end up being calculated as zero in the projection matrix, and then when you try to multiply uh, vectors by that uh, by that matrix in to get a coordinate in normalized device space, you are going to have a bunch of zeros falling out of the calculation when it comes to figuring out depth in normalized device space, and that's not really something that you want. Uh, if I were to run this example, I just really punched my keyboard violently there. Anyway, if I were to run this example here, uh, we're going to see we have largely the same issues, and we also have some additional issues that we didn't have before. So things are being drawn inside out, the same way that they are being drawn inside out at, uh, at other points in this video. And we've also got this wonderful flickering on the ground that's being caused by, again, basically fighting uh, a bunch of zeros falling out of the depth calculation in the um, thanks to the malformed projection matrix. This is probably a less common cause of depth issues than simply forgetting to uh, set Z test and write, but it does it does happen once in a while. There's a little bit more nuance to uh, what you should use as your as your projection matrix uh, near and far clipping planes. Uh, not having them too super far apart can cause other problems that are not related to what we saw here. I did make a video on Z fighting back in I think January, so if you're interested in that, you might want to go and have a look at it. So I mentioned that there are 3.5 things that I was going to talk about in this video, and one of them is uh, not going to cause exactly the same problem that we saw here, but uh, it will cause problems that can look kind of similar. So if I were to set GPU set call mode to call underscore clockwise instead of call underscore counterclockwise, uh, we are going to notice if I run the game that it's going to look screwed up in a uh, similar but... Uh, not exactly the same way. So here we don't have um, problems being caused by objects being drawn like on top of ob other objects when they're not supposed to. Uh, here we have more problems along the line of um, shapes themselves being drawn inside out. So like you can see, it it's as if it was made of like this tree here. It's as if it was made of like one-way glass. Uh, so you can see through the outside, but the inside looks like a solid surface. And that is because the culling direction is backwards of what it, of what it should be. Uh, interestingly, it's not happening to all these trees here. So it appears that these trees are actually modeled on the inside, which is interesting, but they're set to like brown. Huh. If I were to, if I were to put the camera inside them, you would see the, uh, the correct color inside. Anyway, uh, where was I? So this is causing the geometry itself to be inside out rather than like the whole world. And that is because we are engaging the culling direction the wrong way. So we are discarding the front facing triangles instead of discarding back facing triangles. Um, it's not the end of the world if you turn off calling entirely, if you use call underscore no calling, uh, as long as you are not, as long as you don't have any zero volume double sided triangles, this won't like cause anything to be drawn funny, but it can be uh, slightly less efficient uh, because your GPU is now rendering basically every triangle as if it's double faced, even if it's, or it's, it's rendering every triangle as single faced. But uh, that also now includes triangles that are facing away from the camera and normally would be discarded. So I'm including that in this video because sometimes it happens and people aren't sure. And sometimes people think it's something to do with like one of these. But uh, it's not really the same. Anyway, uh, there are other ways that you can induce this. Um, I believe, what is it? GPU set um, Z function. Uh, if you do some really weird things like... What is it? ZF underscore. Okay, I forgot the name of the constants for a minute. But anyway, if you set the Z compare function to CMP function underscore, where are we? Uh, greater at the top here. And if you clear depth to zero, 
So if you just say draw clear depth and set that to zero, uh, you are also going to see some funny inside out world effects. Um, oh, I said zero and I typed one, didn't I? Uh, you are going to see some funny inside out world effects. And this is, if anything, even worse because it looks like the, the mountains are now being drawn inside the trees, which is definitely the stuff of nightmares. But I'm not going to spend a great deal of time like talking about some of the really weird specific ways that you can do this because like if you do this you're doing it on purpose for some reason and you probably know what you did that caused things to go wrong uh gpu set z function is a super obscure function of the graphics api that i've honestly never had cause to use um like maybe if you're doing some really weird masking thing with like depth or stencil you might be able to find a use for it but like normal people don't do that hey anyway so these are the first three and a half things that you should check if your world is inside out if you've ever had this happen to you before, now you know why it happens. If you've ever seen someone complaining that their game is being drawn inside out, now you know how to explain to them what's going on. So I am going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if you're interested in 3D stuff or any weird shader stuff, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out the Steam page for Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to that can be found down below as well. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.